All right, DP City Church, are we ready to start our worship? I'm going to ask everyone to please get on your feet. Let's start worshiping the Lord. Awesome. Good, good, good. Real quick, turn around. We're going to say hi to our Facebook people. So good morning. If you're watching my Facebook, hello. Get another cup of coffee. Stand up and worship with us. Good morning. Hey, you know what? 
The Bible says you enter the gates with thanksgiving, and then you keep moving on into praise and worship. So this morning, we're going to look at a really cool video. Romans says this. Anybody who gets before the Lord in heaven and says, I never knew there was a God, the Bible says they're without excuse. All they have to do is look around at creation. So we're going to watch this real quick, and then we're Are you ready to be thankful? Yep. yep, yep. yep. All right, here we go. I'm gonna start in the river. Are we ready? Let's get our praise on to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who is, who was, and is to come. Amen. There is a river where goodness flows, there is a fountain drown sorrows there is an ocean deeper than fear the tide is rising rising there is a current stirring deep inside it's overflowing from the heart of god the flood of heaven is crashing over us the tide is rising rising and it's bursting
church. Who I am. During this week, I was, uh, you know, having some time, alone time with Jesus, and we were talking. <laughs> what he wanted me to tell you guys is that he's already paid the price, and he calls you guys his children. Amen. So with that same, um, it's, it's such a powerful thing to think that the King of Kings, that the Lord of Lords, the creator of all the universe, he calls you his child. How amazing is that? How can... <laughs> That's, that's amazing. And once we realize how much that really means, that he would call us our friend. He would call us our ch his children, sorry. He is ours and we are his and he is in us. Amen. Let's praise him with that same thought in our mind, just thanking him, God, that you have placed your eyes on me. that the highest king would welcome me I went lost but he brought me in oh his love for me oh his love for me oh the sun sets free oh it's free His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me. The sun sets free. Oh, it's free and I'm a child. place for you. There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against Let's do it together. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. I am who you say. Sunset's free, oh it's free and 
God, we praise you, for you are worthy of it all, God. You are worthy.
Only one name, one name, no other name under heaven whereby we can know the peace and the love and the grace of life. And you know, no matter what you've been dealing with, how many of you have been dealing with something? Come on, be honest with me. If you've not been dealing with it, don't put your hand up. Come on, you're dealing with something, put your hand up. You want to identify this. Want to, listen, God's watching, man. Lord, I'm going through something. You're going through something? If you ain't going through something, get ready. Saddle up, because you're going to ride. Okay? But what we do is we face life understanding that we give him the honor and him the glory. He's taken residence inside of us, and we have something to be encouraged about. And if you believe that, give him the praise. Come on. Okay, now find three and a half people and squeeze them until their lungs come together, okay?
up for Jesus, the King of Kings. Who was here for Easter last week? We had an amazing Sunday. We had great worship, a great message from Pastor Bob. We had goats, rabbits, chickens, free coffee and donut while Ray and Geraldine, I believe, were driving back from Texas, right? We had 566 people on the property. Now, you want to know why numbers are important? It's not the total. It's the individual. We also had four people come up and give their lives to Jesus Christ. I think there was a few more that stood up as well. New visitors? Do we have any new visitors? Hold your hand up. Right here. Go ahead. Hold your hand up. We're going to give you a card. You get free coffee and donut. If you just fill this out, take it to the info booth. We're glad you're here this morning. Let's give it up for the new visitors. Who needs a prayer answered? Anybody need a prayer answer? You know, my wife's in the back back there. When she was looking for a husband, she got one of these cards and she goes, I don't, I don't know who that Steve Ryan is, but he's looking good. You know what I'm saying? So just fill out this card. We pray over it all the time. We see miracles. Al, how you doing? How's your health doing? Your health's doing good? Hey, put your hands out to Al. Let's pray for him right now. Lord, I just lift up Al Griffith to you this morning. I don't know exactly what's going on, but I know he's been in a battle physically. We pray healing on him. Isaiah 53 says, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, he is healed. Amen. We claim that because of what Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross for Al. And everyone said, amen. amen. Our next first Wednesday service is May the 4th at 7 p.m. Tori's going to be leading our kids' church. It's going to be a Cinco de Mayo or Fiesta theme. Then Kyle and Sharissa Headley, are they in here? The youth? Kyle, stand up. Kyle. Where's Sharissa at? Sharissa, yeah, Sharissa. She's doing everything. She's in the back. They're going to be doing campfire worship night with Hannah Folks going to be doing the, the worship for them that night. So that's going to be fun. I'm going to be doing a message called Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Come on. Let me say it again. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Yeah. Me and my man, Reggie. Reggie, stand up, who runs three of our groups. Here. He's going to be doing announcements and offering that night. He said, come and see the preview because it's going to be better than the main show. You know what I'm saying? Come on. You know, I was going to dance that night. I was going to dance. And then Reggie let me know that I had a disorder called CRD. It's called Caucasian Rhythm Disorder. And all the white people is like, yeah, that's us. You know, just can't. Yeah. You ever notice white people just can't move very? I don't know who these three people are right here. She's like, I like this church. The girl in purple. Hey, what's your name real quick? I got to hurry up because Pastor Bob's coming up next. What's your name? Kaylee? Haley. Is this your first time here? It won't be your last time here, right? Okay, that's good. How old are you, Haley? And how about you? How old are you, this young lady right here? Twelve. See that, see that gentleman behind you? He's our youth pastor. Introduce yourself. He'll get you hooked up to the youth group. Amen? Mother's Day is coming up. Susan, can you stand up? The best-looking mother-in-law in the world. Susan, Pastor Susan Beckett, let's give it up. She's got some special gifts that day that she's going to be giving out. She's the, oh, yeah, she's my, well, I was married before, so I did have another mother-in-law. Most of you don't know I, were, I was married before, but that's another story. Lord, just take that, uh, okay, here we go. So we want you to invite your mom, stepmom, or someone that's been like a mom to you to church, because it's a day to celebrate all moms, amen? May the 15th is going to be our dessert potluck and connect group launch. So what we're asking is that you bring a dessert before service so we can have everything set up for after service. It's going to be our existing connect groups and also new groups that are starting. How many of you know we get to, better, we get to know each other better in circles than we do in rows? And when you get to know each, each other that way, you have deeper relationships. I see people all the time after service getting little groups 
and start talking. But they also meet through the week. You spend two hours on a Sunday morning at church. The question is, what are you doing with the other 166? Now, I'm going to show you an example of Christian and Sarah Tikas. Christian, can you put your hand up back there? They did an event last week, the day before Easter, called City Serve. They had 60-plus volunteers who worked on six different projects throughout the city, and they finished by noon. Isn't that amazing? Let's give it up for them. So we're going to show you this video real quick, and then I'm going to do the offering. Amen. And by the way, everyone in this room is a mobile minister. No matter what you do for a living, you always should be ministering for Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 28 says this, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good, for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. The verse does not say everything is good. It says it works together for good. Have you ever been in a situation you went, there is no way, Megan's smiling over there, no way this situation can turn around. Raise your hand. Is anyone in a situation right now where they're like, there's no way it can turn around? That definitely applies to our finances. I'll just give you a personal example with me and Suzanne. Has anyone in here struggled with debt like right now? Who needs a miracle from heaven? We're going to believe that. For seven years, man, me and Susan, I'm telling you, debt. You know when you just feel like you're underwater all the time, like you can't, just can't breathe. Seven years. But we kept giving, kept giving tithes, kept giving offerings, and I would have times. I want to tell you my faith was great. Sometimes it wasn't. I'm just like, God, where are you? Who knows 
We serve him no matter what the circumstances are, even if they don't look good. Amen? God is good even when circumstances are not. So we had a miracle happen recently, and the majority of our debt was paid off. Yeah. Just so you know, right after that miracle happened, we were able to pay most of our debt off. Uncle Sam sent us a little bill for $6,115 just from the, in the last two weeks, but we were able to pay that off. So let's give it up for Uncle Sam. How many people got an uncle just keep taking that money over and over and over again? So here's the thing. I wouldn't change anything about the last seven years because it taught me a lot about myself. And more importantly, it taught me a lot about God. Once again, not everything was good in those years, but man, my God is good. Amen? All right. So you just stand up. Whether you have an offering or not, stand up, hold your hands up. After I pray, where you guys can come up, drop your offerings in these baskets that we have. Lord, I just thank you for each and every person in this room. We're praying blessings, and if they need a miracle, Lord, we're praying a miracle from heaven. Jesus Christ, you sit at the right hand of the Father. You are the open window. You are the miracle. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, amen. amen. Hold your Bibles up. Say this with me out loud. This is my Bible. It's the living Word of God. Has the power to change my life and the life of those around me. And I declare by faith that our lives will be changed today by the living Word. Give Jesus a praise. Anybody want to guess where I'm going today? John, yeah, how'd you guess? Gospel of John. Why don't you just go to 14, chapter 14 for the fun of it, and let me start something here today. Um, if you're new in our presence and with us today, we welcome you and we appreciate you being here. We want you to be blessed. We're Bible-believing people. If you're watching by Facebook, new people are coming in. Wherever you are, we, we believe the Scripture. It's all true. From Genesis to maps, and it can change lives. But I want to make some opening comments today, because I'm going to start a series. And um, when I make these opening comments, I want you to understand that uh, this series of teachings is about what took place after the resurrection. Last Sunday, we celebrated the resurrection. But this, this teaching, we're going to deal with what literally took place and what were the spiritual implications of post-resurrection leading to Pentecost. And if you grew up in a mainline denominational church, the word Pentecost sends shivers down your spine because you think somebody's going to try to take your tongue out of your head and wag it. Let me start out by saying, tongues is one of the nine gifts of the Spirit. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, tongues, the interpretation of tongues, prophecy, gifts of faith, and gifts of miracles, and workings of faith. Nine gifts of the Spirit. One of the nine. It is not. It is not the only evidence of what took place after the resurrection. So, when I use the term Pentecost throughout this series, don't go off on a little tangent. I've said to you throughout the years now, John 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 are the epicenter of the Old Testament and the New Testament. From Genesis 1 to the end of Revelation 22. And you know that I've said that over and over and over again. To miss what happens, however, in the 50 days from the resurrection to Pentecost, to miss those days of preparing ourselves for what's coming in the future and preparing ourselves with what happened after the resurrection 
that the resurrection purchased. The resurrection of Jesus purchased more than salvation. Way more than salvation. It wasn't just about eternal life. It's more than a ticket to heaven. And what you'll learn if you go with us in this series, what we're going to learn is what happened post-resurrection that the resurrection purchased that's still happening today. And to understand that, that as I've said to you, watch what John 14 says, verse 15. If you love me, these are the words of Jesus, keep my commandments. Now watch what happens. Did you get verse 14 and 15? Oh, 16. And I will pray the Father. Now watch what he says. This is just before, this is the night before he's resurrected, I mean, uh, uh, crucified the next morning. Watch what he says. And I will pray the Father, put your name in there, and he, he not you, you're not the Father, but for you, and he shall give you, say I'm a you, give me, say I'm me, watch it, another comforter, somebody other than Jesus which is another to do what Jesus did, now continue the doing of. And that is, in fact, the person of the Holy Spirit. Verse 15, watch, take me back to 15 if you can, media, if you would. If, everybody say if, if. is a condition. It's a stipulation that if you do this, he says, I, give me verse 16, watch what he says. He says, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter. Okay, and it's important that he may live with you, how long? With you isn't there, it's here. Jesus is there, Jesus is not here. The Bible says Jesus is right now seated at the right hand of the Father. And the Spirit of Jesus is the Spirit of the Holy Spirit and is right here, present right now. But Jesus isn't here. And people are going to get all wound up on that. And if you want to get wound up and discuss it with me later, I'd be happy to do that with you. But just stay with me for a moment. And we can understand that the implications of forever are staggering if you understand that all that the resurrection purchased follows after the resurrection. Everything that the resurrection purchased for you and I and his sacrifice for us purchased something for us now here in this life. And with that in mind, we're going to investigate the 50 days. Because those 50 days changed the world. The resurrection changed us. Did you hear that? The resurrection changed us, you, me, when you accept it. But it was what took place in that 50 days that would change the world and is still changing the world where people understand what it's really about. With that in mind, we're going to investigate those 50 days in the coming weeks because we're moving towards Pentecost. A verse that I have alluded to during this series and will allude to is 1 Corinthians, watch this verse, chapter 3, verse 15. But if the work is burned up, now here Paul is talking about the works of our life what we do with the resurrection that was provided from the resurrection to Pentecost. Resurrection, purchase, the 50 days and the encounter with the Holy Spirit. He's now talking about what you and I do with it. It's called works. How do we apply it? So listen again. But if the works is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. Listen to what he's saying now. This is powerful because if you don't get this, you won't get the series. But the builder suffers great loss. You and I 
can actually lose what belongs to us. If we don't understand what took place in the 50 days. That something was provided and we can actually suffer a loss. But he says, now listen again, I'm going to read the whole verse. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be what? Who's that? Come on. Who's that talking about? You. Me. Saved. Are you saved? If you ain't saved, we can solve that right now. Okay? Okay, but we'll do that. Okay, so watch what he says. But if the works be burned up, that means what you do with your life, what I do with my life, understanding what took place in the 50 days. What I do, you do with your life, can be burned up and we can suffer loss. One day, everything you and I do with our life is going to be torched. It's going to be put to the fire. And what was done for the right reason, for the right purpose, and the right goal will survive. Everything else goes poof. It is gone for eternity. Boy, you got a sober look on your face. Oh, my goodness. It says, though, the builder will be saved. In other words, your life, my life, going to be put to the fire. And what's not of God, poof, that I'll be left. So that means the implications of what you and I do with our life is going to be put to the fire. And if we don't catch what took place between the resurrection and what happened at Pentecost and what was provided, we run the risk of losing our reward and the opportunity. So it says, but like so as barely escaping through a wall of flames. I don't know about you, but I don't want to end up in the presence of Jesus and have everything of my life, everything I've tried to do with it, everything I always struggle to be right to go, and stand there buck naked before God. Do you understand the implications that if you, if you understand that there's a reward for your life, we're going to talk about the rewards. Oh, oh this, this is the hard part. We're going to get to the good stuff. And you're going to have to stay with us in the series to understand what could go up in flames. Now, if, if, if you don't understand the value of what goes up in flames, then what's the loss? But if you really do understand what has been provided and is available and, and belongs to you, there, there, there will be no second chances. We, we, we won't, it'll be too late to say, no, I'm sorry. It won't work. That whatever could have, and, and the scary thing is, is that when you get into his presence, we're going to see everything that's available and then it's going to be put to fire. And then we're going to, it, we're, it's going to decide. Now, that I'm going to be careful here because in this series, you could think that there are going to be stratas and, level, stratas and levels of, you know, reward and all that kind of stuff. And somebody who ends up buck naked and, and, and no reward is going to envy the person with the reward. You understand that in heaven, there'll be no envy. But there will be loss. And if you stay in the series, you can understand it'll begin to make sense why you live your life the way you live your life and why you go to the church you go to. Whether it's this one or anybody else, if it's preaching the word and preaching the truth, you understand that, 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 <laughs> I got to be careful and slow down here. I'm, all, I'm, I'm three weeks into the series in my brain right now. Okay. There are going to be no second chances. There'll be no do-overs. And it's not about the unbelieving, but the believing. The unbeliever won't be involved in this. And if you understand this, the Bible, in light of what's going on, AB 223, remember we talked about that last week? Emphasize is now legal. 
infanticide is now legal. They can kill a live baby. It's been legalized. And you understand that, that where, where this world is going is so tragically evil, and yet God has a plan to raise up a people that are so filled with grace and love and mercy that we are going to be a light to the world. We're going to stand tall in Jesus' name. And we're not going to be cautious. We're not going to be afraid. We're not going to be fearful. And we are done playing religion. Jesus is not a religion. He's a relationship. And he's personal and he's intimate and he loves us. And the whole, the, the whole gig about the 50 days is incredible. I mean, now I'm in week four in my brain. I'm thinking, and Susan and I have been talking about this. I'm telling you, this is starting out serious, but when you get into this series, you are going to be, I, I believe, so blessed to understand not only who you are, but what belongs to you. And even worse, what you can miss. The opportunity. So, uh, in this series, um, opening up the series today, as, we, as I've said on this Sunday, the last, um, the last opportunity to get this opportunity is about the spirit of grace. Pentecost was about the spirit of grace. Listen to what Zechariah the prophet said in uh, chapter 12. I say, his, and I will pour out, listen to this, this and I will pour out upon the house of David. This is an Old Testament prophet. Upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Can you move it, media? Thank you. The spirit of grace, watch this, and of supplication that they shall look upon me whom they have, what? Who's that about? And what is it about? It's about the spirit of grace. We're going to learn in this time period about the spirit of grace, the spirit of mercy that I think some of you, and I know I've been looking at this, I, you know, like I've said to you before, I mean, I'm, I'm in, uh, so I've been following Jesus since 1969, okay? And I, I looked into this series again. We've talked about this subject before. We've taught on it before several years ago. I've looked into this subject and I've seen things I've never seen before. And I want you to understand that the religious lies and deception about the person of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of grace, has so prevailed within the church in America. I can't say for the rest of the world. I'm sure it's the same way there. That we have so missed the blessing and the opportunity because the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of grace, the Spirit of God, the person of the Holy Spirit is not a gas, it's not a liquid, it's not a fluid, it's not a concept, it's not, a, it's not an it. It's the person of the Holy Spirit that Jesus talked all about. And if you read John 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17, you'll find out that Jesus makes it very, very clear that the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit that Jesus said he would give us is the spirit of truth. But that would not happen until after Jesus was resurrected and seated at the right hand of the Father. And after he left, he said, I will send you my counselor. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, and I'm going to give him to you. And you're going to have him exactly as I've had him. Now listen to the implications of this. Yes. Yes. He's saying, you will have access to the personal relationship with the Holy Spirit, Jesus speaking, not Bob, that I've had. And you're going to know him and you can experience him exactly as I have. Now, I don't know about you, but for the last 53 years I've been chasing Jesus. I've wanted to be like Jesus. How many of you want to be like Jesus? Okay. You want to live your life like Jesus, then you've got to do it the way Jesus did it. 
And you can't do it without the one who made it possible for him to do it. Okay? Now watch this. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Watch what it says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. It says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, verse 2, and the earth was without form, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God brooded upon the face of the water. The Spirit of God, that's the person of the Holy Spirit that empowered Jesus as one of us to do what Jesus did for us. Do I need to say that again? The same Spirit that was in the creation of the world you and I are living in and all of the rest of creation that embodied itself inside Jesus has now been made available to you and I. If that, if that doesn't get your fire started, your wood's wet. Okay? You got to understand that John... John 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 are the epicenter. The Old Testament leads to the epicenter. The epicenter leads to the 50 days and the rest of where you and I are living today. And a relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. To know who he is and to know how Jesus walked with him and fellowshiped with him and had a relationship with him and the epicenter of the Bible and what he makes the commitment. Listen to what John 14, 26 says. It says, but the comforter, who's that? That's the Holy Spirit. The, the, the Greek word is parakletos. It means the counselor, the advisor, the attorney. Listen, it doesn't mean defense attorney. It means the legal counsel. Watch this. And the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He will what? All th what are all things? That's everything that belongs to you. Now watch what happens. And bring all things to your remembrance. Whosoever or whatsoever I have said unto you. In other words, Jesus says, the very one that was inside me that led me is going to be inside you and lead you if you understand the 50 days and get there. To the point where you understand that being filled with the Holy Spirit is not a religious encounter. When I met Susan for the first time, I had something greater than a religious encounter. I went hubba hubba ding ding, okay? Um, and, and the more I was around her, the more I fell in relationship with her. And the more I fell in relationship with her, the more I fell in love with her. And it's exactly the same way with the Holy Spirit. That's what he's saying there in that verse. Put that verse back up again, if you would, please. Watch this. And, and all things, bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. In other words, he says, I'm inviting you into the intimacy of the relationship. Jesus says, I have with the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm, I'm inviting you to that. Do you understand that he's, he's inviting us to him. He's not inviting him to come to us. Do I need to say that again? In other words, God is a perfect gentleman. He doesn't go where he's not welcome. So in other words, you invite him in. You give him that opportunity. And when you understand what took place in the 50 days towards Pentecost, you understand, you will begin to see how intimately relational the person of the Holy Spirit is. Jesus transferred us to his personal counselor. He said, Bob, I'm going to give you Susan, Larry, Mary, Joe, whatever your name is. He says, I'm going to give you my guide, my counselor, and while doing for us what you could not do on your own. 
make possible for you to live the life you know you need to live that you know you can't do without. I'm going to say something dangerous. Turn to your neighbor and say, this is dangerous. Okay, here goes. Jesus could not have done what he did for us on his own. Ah, fully God, fully man. Fully God, God can do anything. Fully man can't do anything without God. And if Jesus needed a counselor and he needed an advisor and he needed someone to show him and empower him and lead him to live the life he needed to live, and he said, Bob, I'm going to make that available to you. Why in the hallelujah chorus would I turn it down because somebody's afraid of speaking in tongues? And it's not about speaking in tongues. It is not about speaking in tongues. I know personally have known people that live an incredibly godly life that have invited the person of the Holy Spirit that never spoke in tongues and wanted to. I, I wanted to. But didn't. Why? Because it's not about tongues. It's about the relationship. On, conversely, I know people that speak in tongues all the time that aren't worth the powder to blow them up spiritually. Does that make sense? So you understand John 14, 17. Watch what it says again. 14, 17. Even the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, whom the world cannot receive. The world can't receive it. Watch this. Because it sees him not, neither knows him. Oh, here it comes. But you'll know him, for he will dwell with you and shall be in you. This is an all-inclusive relationship that we're going to learn about in the 50 days. Now, I've titled this series, No Late Grace. There'll be no do-overs. There'll be no second chances. And once you've heard it, you're accountable for it. Oops, 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 wait a minute. And even if you haven't heard it, you'll be held accountable for it. Excuse my French, but that ought to scare the hell out of you. To understand that you and I are going to be held accountable for the things in the Scripture that were provided for us, to us, that we might live the life needed to live, and we're going to let hell influence us to the point that we're going to stay away because somebody else has turned something sacred into something goofy and bring despite and disrespect to the person of the Holy Spirit because it's all about tongues and it's all about emotion and it's all about the, and I believe in all that. But evil has successfully used religion to scare people away from this truth. And there will be no late grace and there's only one opportunity. And you're being given one now. To come to a place where you learn greater about what. So today in part one, say, oh gosh, is he just getting started? That's okay, I'm watching the clock. Okay. Your roast won't burn. And if it does, so will the house. So <laughs> he shall dwell with you and shall be where? In you. You have to ask yourself a question. Why if Jesus needed the person of the Holy Spirit in his life to do what he did for us, how much more should I not only need, 
but want. What he gave to me and he purchased with his own life. It boggles my mind that God decided to humble himself and live in this world as one of us. That boggles my mind. If I was the creator of the world, you'd fry like sausage. Right? Because who's, who of us is going to... The sacrifice that God the Father made one day after the earth had come unraveled and, and something had to happen to turn it around. And the Father turned to Jesus. Father, Son, Holy Spirit turned to Jesus and said, what are we going to do about this? They were outside the garden. Evil has taken over. It's trashing everything we ever created for honor and glory. And Jesus said, Father, I'll go. And the Holy Spirit said, Father, I'll see him through it. Did you understand that the intimacy of that relationship, that one day we're going to stand in the presence of God and we're going to live with what we've done with the truth we're hearing right now. And to understand the implications of that, John, 1 John 4, 6 says, We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God hears not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. There can be no half-truth. A half-truth is a whole lie. And if all we do is we live for a ticket to heaven, that we give our life to Jesus just so we can get to heaven someday, so all this that we're going through is going to end, we're going to miss the implications of what took place in the 50 days. And the power, the, 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 the authority of the love and the grace Hebrews said it this way, 1029. How much sore punishment? <gasps> Was that word punishment in there? Suppose ye shall he be, uh, shall he be through uh, thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he is sanctifi sanctified an unholy thing and hath done spite unto who? The Spirit of, who's the Spirit of grace now? That's the Holy Spirit, who's done spite to. You know how you do spite to somebody? You turn away from them and walk away. Or when they talk to you, you engage somebody else in a conversation while they're standing there. If you understand the implications, you just saw it on television here last week. Where... The President of the United States was rebuffed by a former president. And you understand that for you and I to rebuff the person of the Holy Spirit is tragic. That we say, oh, I can do this without you. I, I don't need you. I can do this. I have my Bible, I read my Bible, I memorize my verses, I spend my time in prayer, but I don't need you. And I don't need your power, and I don't need your authority. And when you understand what took place in the 50 days, there's no late grace. There will be no late grace. You're going to find out that there's a reward, not only in this life, but in the life after this life. Hebrews 29 says, in spite to the Spirit of grace. That no more avoiding who the person of the Holy Spirit is, but people moving closer and closer and closer to the presence of God. And so we understand that there's no late grace. John 14, 16 says, listen to what he says, John 14, 16. He says, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter. In other words, he's going to do for you what I started doing for you, but he's going to do it better. 
Not because he's better than Jesus, but because Jesus did it in the natural for us. Does that make sense? That it becomes a personal relationship. And John 14, 26, is, Thayer says that word, uh, another means literally this. The remainder of, the quantitative of, measured not by quality, but by quantity. It's how much we yield to the person of the Holy Spirit. And we understand that, you know, you, I mean, if you haven't yet learned to talk to the person of the Holy Spirit, you can do that. Holy Spirit, we just call upon you. Holy Spirit, I'm here uh, doing this situation, circumstance, and I don't know what to do. And you know what? I don't know whether I sign this contract, and I don't know who I'm speaking to. I don't know whether I sign this contract or I don't sign it. but you're my counselor and I want you to tell me what to do. And you know what he will? He will if you know him. But if you rebuff him and you hold him off at a distance and you expect him to show up at your demand, oh, I'm meddling now. We were, we, we were going for the first loan on the property. Remember that? We were at the original bank. Remember the original loan? We went to, we were in the little dairy, and which is the children's building now. We needed to, to take out a loan, and uh, and so Susan and I were at the bank and with the loan officer, and and um, I just said, I think it was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, quarter of a million dollars to remodel the old building, the dairy, and uh, not this building. And we're sitting there, and I turned to Susan, and it, I think I got this. She, she remembers every single word. Brothers, you, you have a wife like that? She's got all the words, okay. It kind of went something like this. I don't think I can do this. I, I don't think I can sign this. I, no, there's no way I can sign this. And the bank gets a call. The bank gets a call. From Gary Greenwald, pastor of Eagles Nest Church. This was 70? late 70s, and, and he, the, the bank officer says, you have a phone call. <laughs> what? I have a phone call? Some guy by the name of Gary? Gary Greenwald? What? How does he even know I'm here? Okay. I, I took the phone and I said, hi, Gary, what's up? And he goes, whatever you're about to do, the Lord says, go ahead and do it. I looked at you, right? Isn't that true? We got where we're at right now. And you understand that you have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit that will counsel you and weave you through circumstances and situations as long as your heart is open and you're willing to listen. This is not, this is not just about having a new buddy in your life. This is not just a new friend. Hey, guess who I met? This is somebody who slips into your life and brings a, a, a peace and a comfort and a world that's going to hell in a handbasket. And there is grace and there is mercy and there's love and you feel his presence. And in this series, you're going to learn what took place. That the resurrection of Jesus purchased more than your salvation. That was only part of it. He purchased your right to have a relationship with his own personal counselor. To, to, to know him in a personal way. And there's going to be no late grace. There'll be no late grace on this one. So for the days ahead, we're in this series, as we move towards the day of Pentecost, John 14, 16, one more time. Thayer says, quantity. In other words, you can have what he had. Now, I'm going to say something that my theological brothers and sisters may challenge me on, but that's okay. I just personally believe it. You have to make a decision. So now you've been told to have a relationship with the Holy Ghost. You let him tell you whether this is true. That the reality of this is so crucial that you understand that what God is about to do in this world 
I said to you last week and the weeks before in the previous series that I think it's possible. Everybody say possible. possible. That that was the last Easter we will celebrate here. There's a very serious chance that by next April, we may not be here. And, oh, yeah, that sounds good. Are you ready to go? Oh, I'm ready. Take me out, leave my pile of clothes, and I'm out of here. Okay. Oh, that's a, that's a vision I don't want to look at. Okay. Okay. This is critical to understanding the 50 days and the resurrection that led to Pentecost and what Pentecost is really all about. And I caution you to no longer see Pentecost from the speaking in tongues platform. And that is a part of it. But it is not the core. It is not the platform. It's the person of the Holy Spirit. And you not pick and choose the, the event that you want. You take it all. You take the death, burial, resurrection, and gift of the Holy Ghost, as Jesus said in John 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. He made it very clear. You go back and read it from that perspective. They must have understood in the light. We've got to understand the relationship in the light of one another, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the Trinity that you and I hold sacred. That we understand that Jesus, as just as the cross must be viewed from the resurrection. Listen to what I'm going to say. I'm going to finish with this this morning. Just as the cross must be viewed from the resurrection, for the cross is meaningless without the resurrection, then the resurrection should be viewed from Pentecost. You view the crucifixion from the resurrection the resurrection from Pentecost and Pentecost from your own personal encounter. Do you understand the weight of that, the implications of that? And, and if we do, you'll understand that the cross is just, um, uh, i got to say, I'm going to be careful here, I'm going to get in trouble here. The cross is a part, but it's not the whole. The cross is meaningless without the resurrection, and the resurrection is powerless without the Holy Ghost. You understand that? It's just another religion. If you understand that. And as resurrection only without the cross is meaningless in a sense, it's pointless. It's just another execution. Another crazy religious guy the Romans executed. And the evidence is that it was the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Does that make sense? And if you understand that, you're not going to camp on tongues anymore, and you're not going to camp on all the craziness that you've seen other people do. And do, does God do crazy things? Go back at the garden. Go back in the garden. Go back in the garden when they came to arrest Jesus. And they come walking down the road. Judas is with them. And Jesus says, Hi, guys. <laughs> they all fall down. Soldiers, I hope they didn't fall on their sword. Okay? You know, they all fall down. Judas included. Judas was with them. Why did they fall down? Because they couldn't stand up. What more do you need to know? People say, well, the evidence, the evidence, oh, well, there's crazy Pentecostal folks. Not only do they speak in tongues, but they fall down once in a while. And believe me, it really does happen. It's in the Bible. But it is not the evidence 
that the Holy Spirit is moving in a room full of people or in an individual's life. The evidence is how we live the character of Jesus as he gave his life for us. That's the most important gift. If you can speak in tongues and can't control your character, what's the point? Does that make sense? But you understand that it's coming to the power of the person. And as the resurrection only without the cross is meaningless and pointless, accepting the cross and the resurrection in the light of Pentecost can explode inside your life can become real to you and you understand that it doesn't make you goofy, but it does make you different. You think from a different place. You act from a different place. You live different than you used to be. That so many people put the change in their life on the crucifixion. And it's not that if you don't embrace the person of the Holy Spirit, it's not that your life won't change. It will. Some of you in the room right here have never asked for this third relationship. And I understand why. Actually, makes good sense until you understand what I'm talking about. And you understand that that Jesus purchased for you and I the right to know the person of the Holy Spirit that moved in to the tomb and raised Jesus from the dead and came into your life and my life and took you from death to life on the inside. You were born again. But now are you ready to enter into that relationship? Are you ready to say, I want, I want, I want this? I, 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 and I know, I understand your fears. I understand your fears. I understand your concerns. What's it going to do to me? What's it going to make me do? Or, you know, am I going to lose control of my life? No. God's a perfect gentleman. He'll never take total control of your life. He doesn't do that. He just simply comes in and says, I want to be an influence in your life. And I want to give you power and I want to give you grace to do what you otherwise couldn't do that you know you need to do. And I want you to feel my presence and my love, he says, and I want you to know that I'm there with you. And no matter what's going on in the world, deep down inside you, you can have a peace that Jesus said passes all human understanding. He said, Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be dismayed. In my Father's house is a mansion. But right here, right now, that mansion is you. And are you ready and are you willing? You know, If you haven't said, I invite your Holy Spirit to come into my life the way you did into their life at Pentecost. And you understand the 50 days Jesus sent them for that encounter. And we're going to learn about what took place in those 50 days. If you want that encounter, and you've never said, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want Him to come into my life, if this is what it's really all about, and I want Him to come into my life and be that influence. And you've never done that before? Stand. And you've never done it before? Never? This is not an arm twisting. I, I don't get a reward for this. God's not counting numbers. 
But if you want that, I'll give you one more shot. Because yeah, some of you, I can hear some of you thinking, what's he going to do after this? Is he going to make me come up there? No. You're going to stay right where you're at. If you have to come forward at an altar call to get the person of the Holy Spirit, show me chapter and verse. People got it on the road to Emmaus. People just walking through life. He'll come to you right now. I'm going to give you one more chance. And, and this is not the last chance. This is going to be the easiest chance. Count of three. One. Two. Three. Let's pray. Would you reach around and put your hand on one of these people? Just touch them. Man, if you're watching by Facebook or YouTube, whatever the case is, and, and you want that, let him come to you right now. Let him come to you right now, whether you're sitting in, where, no matter where you're at. You're on your phone, you're on a laptop, whatever the case is. Just invite him to come in. Holy Spirit, we'd ask that you come upon our brothers and sisters here this morning, that you just touch them and fill them. Holy Spirit, let them know how much, how much, how much you desire to strengthen them and give them courage and hope and faith. Fill them with your presence and give them the assurance of your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Finish with this this morning. Go on, give him a praise. <clears throat> Stick with us in this series because the title of the series is No Late Grace. There's going to be an opportunity where grace is off you're going to end up with what you end up with. So as we go from here today and we go and we share love with one another, hopefully you picked up something about who you are and how much he loves you and how much he cares for you. And one of these days, he's coming back. And when he comes back, he's going to take us home and we're going to be in his presence. We're going to be in the way, the glory of his presence and I'm going straight to the No Guilt Buffet. I mean, come on. Isn't it true? It's going to be happiness. It's going to be joy. It's going to be peace. It's going to be glory. It's going to be the weight of His presence. There's going to be no pain, no grief, no sorrow, no suffering, none of the garbage that the world throws at us. But until then, we're going to live His presence in Jesus' name. Give Him one more good praise. Would you stand? Heavenly Father, we thank you as you send us today into a world that's lost and lonely, that needs to know these things. Help us as we march towards Pentecost and find the true meaning of the person of the Holy Spirit and his power and his relationship in our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, God bless you. We love you.